Uh, you have my text, so I don't think that it's convenient to read all the text, but only I want to put the principal parts to discuss. Uh, as regard to the uh, phenomena relating to human beings, uh, the ascetismus of the hypothesis of the creation of models and the experimentation uh, and all the, that has proposed by the, the science, uh, in the sense modern of science, is in part compensated by the fact that we humans have partial access to the production of certain phenomena that can be observed through philosophical self-reflection. And of course, for believers also for faith. According to the Socratic principle, knowledge they self, be they self, which Hegel also plays in the center of the philosophy of spirit. I say Hegel for the modern philosophy, but also the old philosophy, Aristotle, all philosophy. Thus, we are <coughs> dealing with what in the activities of praxis that are different from the science uh, theory and technological application can be demeaned the genetic of action, uh, as say, Paul Ricard, you can say, and other philosophers today. So uh, we know the human being has uh, work and uh, we know that the human being uh, act by to observe an, an end in the praxis. And uh, we know that this end could be better or not. So we can have an, uh, an, uh, an interpretation of the human being, uh, uh, a philosophical interpretation of human being uh, that can serve to read what is the sign that the human being uh, put in, in the history. So um, that means that the interpretation of the ultimate meaning of such action is only understood by the subject, is self-reflection, according to this principle that we say, knowledge you say. This, so, Elocutions and uh, combined by the signs that human partially share with the high animals are part of the kind of discourse that does not express brain, uh, part of the brain of no, brain, but uh, territorial organization and symbols and and all things that we can that we can observe a uh, production of men by also this self-reflection, understand that these are impressions, are intentions and disposition and desires and choice and ideas that say perception in them of good and evil and justice and injustice uh, and other moral qualities that that indicates uh, the bonds with others, also the relation with the natural and also uh, relation with high entities, gods, etc. This we can understand not only by the signs that in the history of human being live in the culture, but also for the self-reflection. Uh, this, uh, we can say, in the, in the past, uh, was easy for uh, Aristotle, especially, uh, and also for Plato, but also for Thomas Aquinas to say, the language is uh, the characteristic of human being, <coughs> and uh, the, the fact that the, the, woman, the, the, the human being is uh, so on, uh, Logiticon logos, the human being is the animal to have the logos. Logos have many 
many meanings in the Greeks. If you take the dictionary of uh, in Greek, dictionary of logos it has the majority of the meaning, but the, the, the first meaning is to, to say uh, the, the war, the war. So, and for Aristotle and also for Thomas Aquinas, this indeed the possibility that the human being is a social animal uh, and also religious animal. So, but today, to the very primitive, it's not easy uh, to use the, the idea of the locution because, uh, yes, we, we understand today that we open this way, but it's not easy to know because uh, we don't have uh, writing logos uh, for study the, the ancients. So, uh, we need to go to another things, symbols, and all the object to understand. And this is clear that uh, we need not only this, but all the perspective that is not the ancient perspective. It's so a more, more modern perspective. But I think that the philosopher and the theologian must recognize the evidence that comes from the history. Uh, that uh, continuity, a biological continuity between the animal and the human being. Of course, uh, the new idea of organ transplant uh, surgery uh, with this performer uh, use of the animals' uh, organs to humans uh, prove also, in some sense, our continuity. So, the philosopher and theologian must try to show that man, anyway, is different from animals on the basis of this auto-reflection that the right to say that the human being is a human person, is a person. And uh, uh, it, it, the person, in reality, for many characteristics, also for all the philosophers, both, Greeks, but also moderns, is different of the, of the animals. And it's, it's not only a biological or physical difference, but it's also a difference that comes from for all the, all the parts of the world, what we say, spirit. Anyway, in, in reality, uh, for in a consideration of also classic philosophy, but also modern philosophy, really we don't have an auto-reflection of ourselves that can be transparent about what is our essence. We need to discover what are our essence also in philosophy, also in the classic philosophy, also in the modern philosophy for our activities. We, we can have a transparency of our ego of our soul, of our spirit. Uh, we need to know what are, we are, but a reflection of our activities. And in the end, if we have some activities that are a difference of the material activities, uh, the classic was to think, uh, cogito ergo sum, also Descartes, eh? but also he homo understand, eh? Uh, we we say that we need to have a principle to realize these activities that is in the, of the same nature of this activity. So if these activities, we have a perception that are spiritual like in the activity of love, love or in the activity of think, we, we say the principle of this activity is a spiritual principle. So, uh, Plato considered that the soul is a reality spiritual, and uh, Aristotle the same, and Thomas Aquinas more precise say, our soul is an incorruptible soul. So, it's not a material and not have the characteristics of the material things, its soul is incorruptible. Uh, many moderns say 
immortal, but immortal is uh, Napoleon is immortal, is more uh, <laughs> political things. But I think it's more precise to say it's incorruptible. So, and this is very important because for the classic, um, Saint John Damascene, the Greeks, fathers of the church, and also for the interpretation of this classic to do Thomas Aquinas, for, for say, the, more, the biggest theologian of the Catholic church. Uh, this uh, soul, this spirit uh, that is, uh, the reality to put in direct contact with God and put this uh, characteristic of the human being that is image of God, but is in the origin come from God and is destined to have a special relation with God, to have a special partnership with God. So, uh, and this is the consequence of our self-reflection, we can say. So, and I go to, to, to my conclusions. Of course, I, I want to discuss with you about these things, and I'm going to give more time for this. So I remember when I asked to give uh, in, in Paris 50 years ago, I think, <laughs> if Lucy has the same soul of our soul, and he said to me, yes. Have the same soul. So, <laughs> <laughs> you see, three million two hundred years ago. So I am very happy for me because I never understand that there are an an species that is not animal and is not human uh, intermediary. Is for me, it's impossible to understand or, or, or belong to the human being or belong to the or, or to the animals. But to have a sort of omnide that is not uh, not human being is not uh, is not uh, animals. Uh, so uh, when uh, uh, if say this to me, I reflect is uh, Lucy not have some kind of religious activity, and concretely, you know that for the philosopher of religion the more important act of religion is prayer. So, uh, and, I and I find a very nice definition of prayer, and praying that is uh, made by some philosopher of religion, uh, that say, that's Hegel, is very famous, uh, that say, of course, the prayer of these humans is not like, like our prayer, our liturgy or these kind of things, or, or the father that we know, but is only a living companionship and an aspiration to have a companionship that can uh, help us uh, in, in the different uh, problems that we have in the life. And uh, this kind of prayer, I think that we can say that have lucid and uh, uh, especially if we have our soul. So uh, my consequence, of course, is an hypothesis, is that the human being from the beginning pray, and this is the characteristic of human being. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.